Welcome to Curious Salt. My guest today is Fon Monsawad, a Thai expat living in Germany. She's working as a digital learning specialist. How on earth did I meet Fon? So we met last year during a scuba diving trip uh, in Dahab. It was a lot of fun. We shared the love of diving, talking about our feelings and everything else. Today, I feel so lucky that we have kept in touch and that she's a guest on my podcast. Hi, Fon. Hi, Sama. So nice to see you again. And um, yeah, I'm really happy to be here. It's my first time um, being on a podcast. So I'm really curious how this is going to go. I think it fits really well to, um, I think, the whole concept of, you know, like letting the personality speak. And I think that's why we're here, right? Yeah, I love that. I love, uh, first, I love getting my friends out of their comfort zones. So I've been doing it for quite a few episodes now. Nice. <laughs> and second is like, it gives me a platform or a way to like connect with friends or actually even strangers and like, you know, and get in there, like ask them interesting questions or even dull, boring questions. I think they are still interesting, you know? Yeah, I think so too. And because I feel like oftentimes I don't get asked enough questions in my life. So actually this today makes me feel quite special that um, I get to be your guest and um, to have the space to have this conversation with you. So, yeah. Awesome. I think let's start by asking you, what are you curious about? Okay, difficult question. I'm curious about people and their personalities. It's because I find I'm really fascinated by human dynamics and um, what's what's underneath and because I I think that um, every human being is such a unique entity and what we bring onto the table or how we show up in the world um, and it, it's a very interesting um, dynamic and um, so like for example like talking about personality I feel like I'm always drawn to getting to know the person on, on a deeper level I feel like you for example when I first met you I feel like you had such an interesting perspective on things, the way you looked at things. And I feel like that's the beauty of, of the world that we have, you know, different personalities and different perspectives and mindsets and the strength we bring onto the table. It's just, I feel like it's, 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 it's the beauty of the world. It's um, how I see it. So that's, so I think to answer to your question is, um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious about um, people in general. Well, to, to, Go back to the time we met. I remember how it felt very, very easy to be vulnerable around you. Okay. I was uh, going through some sort of like a healing and uh, trip and like trying to just like sit with myself and deal with my emotions, which were very intense. And I don't know, like you were someone who I just met, but you made it very easy to just be myself and like talk to you and like, you know. Yeah, I, I felt like you were going through some deep self-reflections and you had a lot to share. So and, and in general, I, I like to listen to, to stories. So I think it was it was it was a perfect moment to 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 hear your stories and get to know you better. And also thanks for the compliment. <laughs> It's not a compliment. I truly mean it. And yeah, I'm always in a self-reflection uh, mood. So you're welcome anytime. But yeah, even through uh, through the year, we've we, we, we've been sharing and exchanging a lot of articles and stuff on like personality types and mental health and all of that thing. So I want to ask mm -hmm. you, how did you find that you're interested in this? Like, tell me about your career journey, because I think it's interesting and it's like full of twists, right? Yeah, there's a lot of twists. I'm sure I, I can share a little bit about, maybe let's start with my journey because I started in my bachelor, I studied political science. So it was my dream career to work in politics or in diplomacy or become a diplomat. Um, But now things, you know, like things happened, life changed. So the twist is now I'm working a lot with psychological concept apply psychology so so i'm in learning and development area so so i wanted to become a diplomat in the beginning because i wanted to you know like make peace in politics i was interested in international relations and 
and I wanted to be in the position where I can shape uh, the world and bring peace forward in the, um, in the world politics. Like it was like a big dream, right? <laughs> so I'm I'm always like that. Like I have like this uh, big vision <laughs> on thing. But then I realized being a diplomat would limit it, uh, me to actually do good for the to the humanity as a whole because as a diplomat you're you're the one who who's there to protect the interests of your country and for me i my aim also wanted to help people to be in helping professions but for me i felt if i really wanted to help people like my capacity or my responsibilities don't have to limit it to just certain people or to um, so I'm Thai, so to the Thai nationals, for example. But I feel like with the strength I have, my you know my how to say skill set, I feel like it it could expand, and I can help other people beyond this like square of nationality. You know, like being serving the interests of the Thai people. But I feel like compassion it can grow beyond that, and so. And along the way, I, I did a personality test and I was tested as an introvert. <laughs> so, and then I I read about it. I, I educated myself more about what introversion is all about. And for me, it was like this aha effect, like, aha. So that what it was, like all these like weird feelings I had in social interactions, you know, like having to like get up and to meet the relative at the family gatherings. And I feel like I have to give myself some time to mentally prepare to meet them or or showing up in a party. And like, it just give me, I would need a few minutes to actually read the room and to feel a bit settled. And so like having to, you know, like think before I say something. So for example, like before I came to this podcast, I already prepared myself <laughs> how to be a good guest in, in a podcast. So so I think this is, you know, it, it was something that people thought it was it was maybe strange, you know, when you have this introverted personality. So for me, like discovering about introversion was a, was a, I can't say an eye opening experience to get into to understand myself better. So. So it started to make sense for you. Yeah, I started to make sense about who I am and what's my relation in the world and also to understand like the biases that the world holds on to. In school, um, I think in general, like the world, it's kind of like extroversion is being praised and applauded. It's preferred in the system, let's say in school, in, in the workplace or in, in any kind of institution. So this outspoken personality was perceived as, you know, being competent and it's a positive trait. In school, like I struggled so much um, as a child, you know, when um, we had to do a group work, um, having to give presentations or that. I, and when I found myself that I work, worked best in silence and on my own to do my creative tasks. And, but it wasn't recognized as something positive. So social competence was still based on this like outspoken personality. So like like I said, like discovering or learning more about introversions really helps a lot to to understand me, myself, and my connection with the world and people around me, and how I can better also take care of myself and what I can be mindful of, for example. That is so cool, actually, and and I think that got you to 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 seek working in mental health, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's also been one of my passions to to work in in the mental health um, area. So I think it's the topic has become more relevant. Um, I mean, of course, we were speaking about introversions and it has nothing to do with it. And a, a disorder also has nothing to do with um, your mental health issues. So, I mean, with mental health, like it can happen yeah. to anyone. Right? <laughs> but I think the whole idea was because in general, I, I just like to work with people. This was also something that I realized that with my introversion, it's also it allows me to to come to the passion to arrive uh, to myself where i can say actually i think i work best one on one with the person and to be able to establish this you know 
special connection and the the other person is that will have my full on attention and I and I love being there for people um being a good listener and so I think that's also related a little bit why I also I'm also yeah thinking about also a career in in mental health yeah exactly I, that's what I meant uh, I meant that once you started to get to know yourself better and know your strengths and weaknesses and all of that you started to feel yeah I'm good with one on one I'm good with using my intuition you know and exactly. listening to people and yeah. I think you would be great I can't wait till I get my free therapy with you <laughs> oh my god that would be such an honor really wow well, you made you... my day I think you'll be great and uh, the type of articles that we've been sharing as I said and even the things I see you share on LinkedIn are always like very interesting to me mm. but your career generally was in digital learning you mean exactly. is it learning and development it's still in the era of learning and development um, but what I what we do is especially for me so the main idea is to translate the analog version of training and coaching into the digital version so it's all it's more like a, a digital solution to challenges you know to something a little bit not traditional I hope that makes sense for me it does because I I have worked in digital marketing and social media marketing and then content marketing like and online then like content PR and digital communication so I yeah my whole career was digital yeah. so yeah, for me, I always come to people who think in a traditional way in a workplace. I'm like, this is how you digitalize things or, you know, this is how you cope with the new thing. But uh, it's exhausting because you have to be aware of everything around the world. You know, the new tools, the new... Mm-hmm. You have to be you, quick and... You have um, to be quick and agile, today. as they say, which exactly. is a word. It beca- it's become a cliche, actually. <laughs> it's more like a buzzword, to be honest. I mean, it's such a cool concept and it has also something that... It has to be also a mindset, I think, agile. And it, I mean, it has its beauty, you know, I think in terms of, let's say, content creation involving customer collaboration. And, I mean, podcast fits really well to that, I think. But yeah, it's like the world, it's, it's the dynamic is always like changing all the time, right? Yeah, and there are certain buzzwords in order to succeed in corporate life, I guess. Like one of them is definitely now becoming agile. And then there's like mm-hmm. transformation, uh, digitalization, you know. Um, yeah, and high else? performance. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of these things. But I, I want to ask you to share with us like the most important lesson you've learned over your career. Hmm. It's a very, very good question. Okay. So I think what I've learned um, over the course of my career is um, time management is not enough, but also energy management self-care for example I think when you start a career there are always maybe you have a chance to have a mentor and they help you set priorities or uh, set up your to-dos and manage your time and so it's a way to be efficient and to be effective at work but at the same time I know that you know like on LinkedIn or like um, Howard Business Review there are always thousands of articles about but how do do how can we better take care of ourselves like well-being like sure one of these time management but for me that's also not enough in addition to that what I but what I've been trying to practice is also energy management so it's how to say it's also linked to being an introvert as well and I find that I need more time for myself and to take care of myself. Time is really constructive. It can be set, you know, like your priorities, your to do, your assignments. But energy is it's more flexible. It's unique and it's it's something personal. It's also a choice, like certain choices that I make at certain time. And to be able to to cope with, for example, like in this dynamic working world, what helps is to connect with myself and understand my 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 energy needs. What's important for me to to feel well, to stay well, and to I don't know, understand like what is okay for me, what's not okay for me. For me, home office has been really helpful to to keep my work life balance in shape. So time to manage you know like some personal life you know time like for me I, I love doing sports so and um 
So try to understand like, okay, this is a certain time that I need to do sport. Yeah, I think all about understanding what I really need to, to stay in shape mentally, emotionally, and physically. And to that, it's like, yeah, like I said, I'm introvert. I need my downtime. I have my, my solitude, the moments that I need for myself, or like to not or to, to decline social invitations and stay home, read a good book and with a cup of tea. So I think, yeah, my advice is also to to others also, yeah, energy management. This is gold. I'm in awe of what you just said because you articulated it very well. And mm-hmm. I want to uh, like maybe surprise you a little bit that it's not just introverts who have to take care of their energy and have to have downtime. Sure, sure. And just to be very honest with you, it's still an area that I am, I find it challenging and I'm still going through because the issue with me as an extrovert, I'm not generalizing, of course, because I know I've been talking on this podcast with a lot of introverts and extroverts. So I'm not like an ambassador for extroverts, but I'm just sharing my, <laughs> my, my experience. <laughs> sure, sure. So the thing with, with being an extrovert for me is like I take my energy from people and I always think, or I used to think, that being around people as much as possible is good for me because it feeds me. But I think lately or when you start to feel burnout or you start to feel like overloaded is when you notice that being around people's energy is like different. So you have to mm-hmm. be careful about which which energies are you surrounding yourself with? That's number mm-hmm. one. It's like, so I noticed that you have to be careful, as I said, with, with, the, with the type of energy that you're surrounding yourself with. And also mm-hmm. like notice when you need that downtime. Like I miss it. Mm-hmm. You're, you, from what you're saying now, I feel like you, you understand your mind pretty well and you understand when you need your downtime. And I, I've seen this in my other introverted friends as well. Like they would say, they would gladly say no to outings, no to things. Mm-hmm. Even if there's judgment, they don't care. <laughs> yeah. They just know that they need the rest. While for me, it used to be very, very hard to say no to things. I would feel like, no, this is not my nature. I have to be the yes person, you know. Mm-hmm. Lately, it's become very obvious that uh, even me who takes my energy from people, I need my own downtime. I need to stay at home and chill and do nothing if I want to. And then after a few days, I would feel like, no, I have to get out. I, I've spent a lot of time on my own. You know, But there needs to be some balance. And yeah. um, I'm still trying to work out when is the time to pull back or, as you said, do some energy management, like... For you, when is, uh, which, yeah, this could be a good question. Like, what is the, indi- what are the indicators that makes you think, oh, I now need to focus on my own mental health or self-care and mm-hmm. take some time? What, what are some of the indicators that you come to know, you've come to know over ex- uh, experience and exposure? Yeah, well, that's a very, very good question. So for me, when I realize that maybe I start to make small mistakes, or start to become more forgetful, or I feel like even if I sleep, I have a good, or maybe eight hours of sleep, but it's my my energy is not fully there, or I haven't really been well recharged, um, for example. Like small things like being forgetful, making small mistakes, or, you know, forgetting my laundry and just left it in the, in, in the machine. Or I realize that, oh, you know, like, I really need to, to clean up my apartment. Or I, I didn't have time for that. Or I didn't have time to cook something nice for me or uh, oh you know like lately I haven't been doing enough sports so it's something I start to to recognize you know like things are a little bit out of shape the work life the balance is like it's not like how it used to be or uh, I think the feeling of yeah like also feeling exhausted and it doesn't get recovered and that's when I, I start to realize like okay like you know my body is giving me a signal my <laughs> my men, my mental health is giving me a signal and I something I should listen to and and try to work around boundaries establish okay this is my framework and this is how I would survive and function and <laughs> in a better way you mentioned sports as a way for you to like de-stress and you know take care of your health and all of that and I've seen your passion for diving and yeah I love you for it uh, you even diving with you made me love diving even more. Uh, 
Oh. And uh, but also you like you like hiking, and I've seen incredible photos of of you and a few a few mountains all over the place. Yeah. Which which sport brings the best in you? You you think is it diving? Is it hiking? Is it something else? Oh wow! Very very interesting question. Difficult to answer. Like the thing is, I love diving. I love ocean. I love the energy of the water and the sensation under the water. Uh, the thing is, I live in south of um, of Germany, and um, I live in Munich, and it's surrounded, uh, not really surrounded by mountains, but it's not very far from the mountains, from the Alps. Sure, I like hiking, and it's away. It's like a best weekend getaway from the city, from work. You know, you leave everything behind, and you just stay in mountains. But I think the best sport that really how to say refines the soul of me it's it's diving so being under the water it's the true definition of freedom confidence and free from all the worries and it's a it's the spot that allows me to to stay at the present moment and be mindful of the surrounding I say under the water is is such a beautiful environment and the things you see you know last year I took a trip to Maldives and and it was like this my feeling was like it was like this huge aquarium where you had to turn 360 degrees because it's always something around you you could miss like uh, a whale shark it could be there anytime and then all of a sudden which is why i decided not to join you <laughs> because oh, i'm not on. ready i'm not ready to, to see sharks yet <laughs> underwater <laughs> remember that photo of us remember when we thought we we saw a shark which oh, it turned out it was shark. not it was not a shark but me and you, you were you freaking freaked out, out underwater <laughs> yeah <I knew> as well. <laughs> <laughs> well i think it would have been my first shark but like but i think what i wanted but to we didn't find like... out it's not till we got out and as the diver <laughs> said it's not yeah, it was a sneaky fish though. It was like falling. It was. It was falling, guys. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But, so Maldives was your best diving spot. Yeah, yeah. And so I what I wanted to say is, yeah, like diving is, is the best sport for me to take care of my also spiritual health <laughs> in a way. <laughs> yeah. But so. have you got over like like for me a lot of the time because I'm not an expert yet, so. A lot of the time, I'm only focusing on my breath. Like, I'm making sure I, I breathe, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. sometimes it makes me, like, it takes, like, over half of the, of the diving trip to just, like, okay, I'm breathing now. Let's just w- watch what's happening, you know? Yeah. But I feel I like underwater, really you, you focus on your breathing a lot. Exactly. That's right. So, when are we diving again, Salma? <laughs> oh, my God. I miss, I miss it so my much. diving buddy. I really miss it and we have to do one soon together. What was the scariest diving trip for you? I know mine easy. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm scared. Depends on how you define scary. Like you were with me in that trip in, in the blue hole, actually. Actually, that was-, that was one dive that it was very difficult for me, but it was easy for you, I think. It, at the bell. Yes, so basically, I I I jumped. In. Yeah, I jumped in. I started to um to descend, and then it was. I think the challenge of the dive was when you get in, it is straight down to through the the tunnel, and I and I realized oh, it's really dark, and I was um descending down quite fast. Oh so shit! I started... We're talking about the bell. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah that that that's among the this is the scariest one for me. I th- no, I love, I the, love canyon. the canyon. The canyon was so amazing. It was my first deep dive. I've seen the glass fish. We saw flocks of fish that has like rainbow reflected on them, rainbow colors because of really? the sun. I don't remember. That was the scene that even when it was taken by camera, it's it doesn't give it any justice. It was one of the things where I felt, oh my god, I'm so alive, you know? Yeah. Wow. The bell is so scary. It was. It was so dark. It was so narrow. Yeah. Anyways, we did it. Would you do it again? A blue hole? I want to do it again, but uh, Mustafa has to be with us. Like, he was <laughs> my source of trust. Like, as soon as he's there. Yes. <sighs> okay, I can talk about diving for a long, long time, as you I can, can see. I can see that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> What makes you uh, another subject? Go for it. What makes you feel inspired or like your best self? Mm. 
Wow, another deep question. What makes me feel inspired? Yeah, deep like the ocean. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I feel inspired when I talk to someone like you. When I talk to someone who like really knows themselves or li- really ha- have done stuff to get out of their comfort zone, to work on themselves. That's That makes me feel inspired. Mm-hmm. people who actually yeah who recognize they are a work in progress and have been working uh, towards getting better being better you know mm-hmm. well I think maybe I could start with maybe what energizes me or I mean we could start it like that like for me also being surrounded by positive people maybe similar to what you've just said so being surrounded by um people who share the right mindset, um, people who are passionate about self-growth, who really, yeah, like, you, it's, for, for me, it's like, it's sort of um, the question of the charisma. I think when people know themselves or know, understand themselves, like, their strengths and even their weaknesses, you know, you know, if they can be vulnerable with themselves, like, it's the sign of, being authentic and I like to surround myself with those people because I feel this is such an authentic um, setting I get to know the person um, the way they really are and I think the conversations are always really you know empowering and I feel like we learn from each other and um, so and of course then in the end of like after the conversation I always come home and feel inspired or I have I gain new perspective uh and it's um yeah I think being with um with certain people like authentic people positive people that's um that's my source of inspiration your answers are just putting the widest smile on my face like I'm just watching you and being in awe of what you're saying I want to ask you about the best compliment you've ever received Best compliment. Um, there are many good compliments for me. Of course. I think um, people, my friends perceive me as being um, a good listener, um, reflective and empathetic. So what's your comment to that? <laughs> I, I, I want to add, add one. You oh, are okay. one of the most empathetic people I've met in my life. Oh my god, I'm feeling moved. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm being completely honest. I mean there's no other reason to to be mean to people. I can't think of a, a reason why I should be mean to people or, or treat people with disrespect. Like it's just Well, I, I would put being empathetic for me you is that you're able to read people very well. That's because you notice things. Mm -hmm. so it it, it, this needs an ability as you just said to like sit and listen and watch and like notice actually so you have the ability to notice things to slow down and I think that what makes you very empathetic I want to ask you about music do you love music yes I do do you play anything any instruments um I do actually I play an acoustic guitar and it was my hobby out of um, COVID time. <laughs> Come on now. What can't you do? <laughs> I play also um, a Thai instrument. It's called Kim. And it's a traditional string instrument that I brought all the way from home. And now it's here with me in, in Munich in my apartment. So Awesome. Would you yeah. share with me later like one song that has that instrument, like one song you like that has that instrument? I want to add it in the notes for the episode. I like classical music, but when we talk about classical music, it's it's not like Mozart or Beethoven. Sure, I also like techno. I do go to techno parties, but what I also like is so time to play that as a traditional instrument, and and I think it's something that people would not expect um, from me, like you know, my personality. Like you see, like oh, she's out at a techno party, and then yeah, here it is in her apartment. She has also an, a classical instrument. So you're just full of surprises, Fong. Wow. What song do you always get stuck in your head? Um, actually, lately I've started to listen to pop music. Um, I just have to look in my phone. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's called Good Girls from Lenny. He's an American oh, okay. pop singer. Do you know it? 
No. Good Girls? Good Girls, yeah. And it By has... Lenny. Lenny. Lenny Kravitz. Yeah. No, the band is called Lenny. But what I like is this, like, to say, like, funky guitar background. So it's not much about <laughs> the lyrics. <laughs> okay. What's one question you wish that I had asked you? Oh, I feel like you've been asking really, really thought-provoking questions, which I really liked. Maybe a question around sensitivity. I think it's something we have and we share in common. <laughs> and yeah. it's something that a lot of people don't talk about. And you see like LinkedIn or those learning and development articles is always it's also around personality but I feel like it's quite it's relatively new to to see um hypersensitivity as a trait a personality trait I mean and I mean you it, got me in a sweet spot here. Oops <laughs> I don't know yeah maybe a question around hypersensitivity. Yes I think that's a good segue but I think you you one time asked me if I'm a highly sensitive person. And yeah. I told you, what's that? I told you, what's that? And then you shared with me some article. And like, it gives you like symptoms and stuff. And I like definitions. I like defining things, actually. Mm-hmm. So once you give me some, like it has some definitions and like people who are highly sensitive have this and that. I'm like, oh my God, I totally am. And it made sense for me. Mm-hmm. But then for me, it's something that I am struggling to accept Even though I'm 30 now, you know, like you should Mm -hmm. be able to like accept yourself better and like know yourself better. But for me, because Mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense all the time that I'm sensitive, you know. How do you mean by that? I mean that sometimes I think that I come across as, you know, um, harsh or, you know, like someone who says what they think of or like blunt. Sometimes I'm too blunt. Mm -hmm. So when I say things in a way like that, it doesn't make sense for me that I'm soft and, you know. (laughs) sensitive on the inside um mm-hmm. but also it's not something that i want people or i wish people to pick up on from the first time because i think it can be used against you and can be you can be manipulated because of it so i mm-hmm. think that's why i'm struggling with it but what are your thoughts on this it's interesting that you you say that that um that uh, you perceive yourself also as being maybe should I say I think straightforward would that be the right words. So I mean sensitivity. Speaking of that, according to Elaine Aaron, so one of the key researchers of like the very first person who comes up with this term. I mean, you can still be extrovert and be highly sensitive, and maybe like it has something to do with you. Ha- you, I think you say. When you say something, it's like you don't take a moment to to think. Like like for you, it's easy to multitask, like to think and say, to speak at the same time. And maybe it was coming from that. But I remember once you told me that you were often told that you were sensitive. And I think it it didn't make you feel well in a way. And um but for me, it's like if you take time, if we take time to think, like okay, we are highly sensitive, and do we feel like we are affected by people' energy? Do we do we confuse people's energies as our energy? Do we feel moved by, I know things around it, like being in the building, like certain place don't make you feel well, or it triggers something inside, and beyond that. I think you've done more readings in this, but like. In a nutshell, how can you expect it to like function if you're being triggered or being sensitive about a lot of things? First of all, you have to, I think we have, let's say we, we have to accept that it's nothing wrong to be highly sensitive or to feel sensitive, um, you know, for instance. It's, it's actually a, a strength even. And, um, and I think to... First of all, is recognizing that this is the trait of us, and um, it's there's nothing wrong with it. It's a gift. It's um, and you know, like recognize what triggers you, and um, you know, when you're feeling overwhelmed, and um, you know, take a moment to to breathe and realize, okay, I think you know, I'm being triggered. 
and just like for me what helps is when I get triggered by something some event um I I would just you know start to recognize okay I'm feeling overwhelmed and I allow myself to feel overwhelmed and you know and what and what exactly overwhelmed me the person the conversation the words they said to me or and why is it because I feel I don't know embarrassed or and you know like take time to 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 understand the moment and and try to detach yourself um from the situation like there's this like 90 seconds rules of how much we are trapped in 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 an emotion um when we are triggered by something and so to me i feel okay then let me just you know like do what's right and remove myself from the situation see it as an it's more like a data maybe when you feel triggered look around maybe what people say to you and it hurts your feelings and see it as a data not an information with interpretation 90 seconds rule yeah it's not a rule but it's something i try it's a principle i try to follow like well i have a choice to be trapped in this difficult emotion for 90 seconds but then i feel really bad about myself or guilty or i or i'm caught up in a difficult emotion i have that choice or i also have a choice to to manage my emotion and detach and then i'm free from that difficult moment it is how i function so but it's important to recognize that okay if this you feel like you are highly sensitive and be prepared a lot of things are going to trigger you so and so I will avoid ignoring your feelings or, or blaming yourself like why, why are we so sensitive but if this is who we are then it's like it's not a choice it's like you know it's part of us so, so. you're awesome fun you're awesome <laughs> <laughs> thanks you are too but um, I want to ask you if listeners want to find you online, where can they? So I'm not an influencer or anything. Well, I'm working on my Instagram. <laughs> so I do you a lot of... post amazing reels. I'm working on myself, on my content in, you know, like outdoor, being in the nature. And so, and I want to share beautiful memories that I have made, you know, in the mountains, in the ocean. And um, so if people want to look me up and stay in touch, so you can, um, um, I think some of you, you will help me later, right? <laughs> to- yeah, I, I would add it on my notes. Fun, um, as I expected, this was amazing. Um, I love talking to you just about anything, I think, yeah. about any random thing. We yeah. can talk about fruits and I would still be interested <laughs> Yeah, for in what sure. you're saying. So this was really cool. Yeah, it is. It's been really nice. Thanks so much <laughs> for having me thanks here. Thank you a lot. Yeah. And thanks for opening this space, you know, to allow the personality to speak. And um, and I feel really comfortable being with you in, in this podcast. And even if it's my first time. So, um, yeah. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Oof.